Are you looking to save money while you travel? We're going to tell you how we afford to travel across America. Hey everybody, I'm Garrett. And I'm Carolyn. And we're Diary of a Family. We're living life intentionally with you. Over the last three years, we have traveled all over America, including 28 states. Think about 14 national parks. We've also traveled over large portions of America, not once, but quite a few times. We have crisscrossed back and forth. We have traveled from Washington to Louisiana. From Texas to Nevada. From Washington to Missouri. From Arizona back to Washington. Today, come along with us as we drive from Washington State to North Carolina. As you join us, we're gonna be sharing with you five things that we do to save money as we're traveling. Make sure to join the conversation and let us know how you save money on the road. We got some muffins for breakfast. Pick up truck. He's got his grown mittens, his cup of water. Is he ready to go? Do the counter too. What do you got? Money. Money, what's that for? At the Silver Dollar Place. At the Silver Dollar Place? We actually stayed the night here at the 50,000 coin doll Silver Dollar Casino back in June. There's a free RV park back there. This was a cool little uh, gift shop. The kids wanted to come spend a few dollars. That's what we're doing, making a quick little pit stop. Those are $75. Look at these, Eddie can look. Oh. This one is $4.95. These things are cool. Emma, you want to show Daddy what you got? I got this ring. Isn't that pretty? Is that a real jewel? Number one is boondocking and lot docking. This is a must so that you aren't stopping every single night in a campground and paying $25 to $55 just to stay for a few hours and get some sleep. We spent a great time here at the Bass Pro Shop in Peoria. Illinois. We are on the road again heading to Indiana. Indiana is going to be a new state for us which we're really excited about. We had an interesting incident last night. Around 11 o'clock we hear loud music and a car comes zipping in then all of a sudden girls screaming and carts rolling. We kind of peeked out the window and we're like there's these just kids. There's a car sitting there. There's these two girls in a cart running around the parking lot. And we're like, this is ridiculous. I'm in my jammy shorts. Um, I'll leave it at that. And I went to the door, opened the door, and just started glaring at them. <coughs> they were gone and out of the parking lot <laughs> in under a minute. What we really like about boondocking is it's free. And a lot of times, you can find them along your route. Yes. Isn't it nice when you can just pull off? You're not very far from the highway at all and you can just get on right away the next morning without dealing with any back roads, stop lights, traffic, etc. We use a couple apps that we'll talk about in a little bit to help us find these amazing locations. A word of caution though when using free campsites, especially if you're staying at like a Walmart or a Cabela's, call ahead and make sure that it's okay for you to camp in their parking lot. We heavily research our boondocking locations, even if it is a parking lot. We wanna make sure that our clearance for our vehicles can get in and out without damaging any landing gear. An aerial view, looking down on a parking lot, if there's a semi parked in that lot, we know that we can make it in. Also, look into different membership programs like Harvest Host, Thousand Trails, and some of the other programs out there. This will allow you to either stay in campsites or on private property, either for free or for a nominal fee. This saves you a lot of money in the long run. Just remember, if you're going through a membership, you want to use it often so it does pay for itself. Number two, don't eat out. This is key. It's pretty expensive to eat out at restaurants. Having other people prepare your food is nice. It's just better and um, less time consuming to do your own shopping, have a plan, and make simple meals on the road. Also, take with you small snacks throughout the day. This is very important if you're traveling with kids as they're constantly asking for something to eat. Yes, yes. Oh, that's cool. Oh, pickles! The sweet nectar of the gods! I think that's good. 
that's good for now. We might have to add more. It looks like brains. <laughs> it looks like what? Brains. <laughs> Emma, what does that look like? That, that looks like <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It looks like yeah. mayo. Yeah. Mayo. <laughs> the last tip is plan simple and easy meals that you can cook on the road, but also can be used for multiple meals. We like to make tacos on one day, and then we have taco salads and reheating tacos for like three days. That is an easy one to do on the road. Other options would be um, cold meals. The main issue I have with travel cooking is the dishes that pile up. You can keep your dishes to a minimum if you're using paper plates and other things that are disposable. We're gonna go through a tunnel. It looks like a building. Are you guys ready? Yeah! yeah. It's a tunnel. Can we hold our breath through the whole thing? <gasps> It's quiet in here with them holding their breath. Can they hold their breath the whole way? Oh, Timmy lost his. It's going down and down and down. How much mountain do you think we have over us? Whoa, and we're still going down. Welcome to Virginia! Number three, find and use fuel discount programs. We absolutely love using the TSD Logistics program which is for diesel trucks. What we like about this, we go to a fuel stop, we fill up, and then we get a discount on it later. We end up saving between 90 to $150 on a trip for gas, and that's significant. They also have fuel programs such as Gas Buddy, and look into a lot of the gas station chains as they have membership programs that provide discounts as well. Whoa! And <laughs> Number four is plan your trip ahead of time. I know there's a lot of people that like to be spontaneous and they like to just go. Sometimes you can run into some major issues if you don't know exactly where your trip is taking you. One of the money saving tips I have is finding the most direct route to the location you are going to. Another tip, make sure to check for low clearances. We like to check our routes against interstates and like truck routes because if they can make it, we can make it. We also plan our routes according to the weather. If it's the winter time, you don't want to be heading up north, but if it's the summertime, you probably don't want to be heading down south. I mean, you can if you want. You can do either of those if you want. If you like negative degree weather and driving in the snow, or if you like triple digits in the summertime and running your AC. We also plan around uh, any tropical storms, any hurricanes, any snowstorms, so that we don't end up stranded in some place where we might be in danger. This saves us money because we're not in a place we don't want to be, and we're not damaging our home. We do have a pro tip for when you are planning your trip. Make sure you know and understand the capabilities and limitations of the trailer and truck, everything about what you are towing. This is crucial when it comes to planning because you might run into a low bridge, you might run into a really steep grade that your truck is not really prepared to handle. Know exactly what your vehicle and your trailer can handle and do, and that'll make planning so much easier. It also will save you money in the long run because when you get into incidences like this, uh, problems can happen with your vehicle. We had our truck brakes catch on fire at one yeah. point, and you don't want to cause damage that will cost you a lot of money in the future. From our pro tip, if you know your capabilities, you should also know how long you can go without hookups. And that will allow you in your planning stage to choose the appropriate time to go into a campground. So you can do laundry, have power, uh, be able to recharge batteries, dump tanks, dump tanks yep. <laughs> wash dishes, fill up water, those kinds of things. Number five, find apps that will help you on your travels. 
We'll go through a list of some of the apps that we use. You can research and find out what else works for you as well. Uh, the main one is Campendium. We love Campendium. The majority of campgrounds and boondocking locations are on there and the reviews have been fantastic. It also helps to find places to get potable water and to dump your tanks. We use my radar for weather. We love this because it gives you kind of a Doppler radar look when you are dealing with storms and wind that gives you a good visual of what the weather is outside the big one for us is wind if we're dealing with heavy crosswinds it's very dangerous to drive it's and helpful to see on the app which direction the wind is blowing like what direction the, the storm is tracked to go yeah. and kind of gives you an idea of whether or not you can outrun the storm or if you need to like hunker down and wait it out until it's safer to drive. The last app that we have enjoyed using is the Hammer Truck GPS. This allows us to put in our vehicle's dimensions, our height and our overall length and our weight, and it will calculate a route for us based off of our size. Take these five tips, make them your own, find things that work for you, and get out there, have some fun on the road, and save money while you're doing it. Make sure to join the conversation and leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, live, live life intentionally. intentionally. Bye, Bye everybody.